it's interesting the questions people ask. Hi, I'm Vicky Glikoski Broad, and I'll be answering the internet's most asked questions about the suffragettes. First up, our question is who were the suffragettes and what did they do? So before 1918 in the UK, women formally weren't allowed to vote, and suffragettes themselves were the campaigners that fought for votes for women. But they particularly campaigned in militant ways. And what they wanted was women to have the say in the parliamentary vote, to be able to elect the people that were running the country and to be able to influence politics to represent them. The suffragettes often get the most attention. They had the most kind of headline grabbing uh, methods, but actually there were many different kinds of suffrage supporters that used many different kinds of methods, all in an attempt to get votes for women. So who started the suffragettes? So Emmeline Pankhurst was the founder of the Women's Social and Political Union. That was founded in 1903, and that is the branch of the movement that is generally associated with the term suffragettes. So she was very much working with her daughters, Christabel, Adela and Sylvia, to run that part of the movement initially. And they ran it from their home in Manchester. So they were really frustrated at the lack of progress in the movement, um, and so increasingly turned to different ways of protesting, and they campaigned under the slogan, Deeds Not Words. So, what's the difference between suffragettes and suffragists? So, the formal suffrage campaigns really began in the 1860s, um, and the initial campaigners, the non-militant peaceful campaigners, are known as suffragists. But they got frustrated with the lack of change, and a breakaway group decided to use more militant actions. So, essentially, suffragists refers to the peaceful campaigners and suffragettes, the more militant campaigners. But people were sometimes members of uh, both organisations or both kind of subsections of organisations. And there were also groups of women that didn't really fit in neatly into either category. So you had groups like the Women's Freedom League who used direct action, but generally non-militant direct action to protest. So they would do things like census boycotts. Um, and there were also branches of suffrage supporters that supported things like tax evasion as well. So why were the suffragettes called the suffragettes? So the original campaigners for votes for women were known as suffragists. But when the Women's Social and Political Union was formed, a reporter from the Daily Mail coined the term suffragettes. And actually, he coined that as a slur. So it was kind of a way of saying that they were like a lesser version of suffragists. But in a really kind of time-honoured feminist tradition, they reclaimed the, the word suffragettes um, and proudly used that to name their part of the movement. And they even called their newspaper the suffragette. Were the suffragettes middle class? Um, so actually, all types of women were really involved in the suffrage movement. People from individuals like Sophia Dalip Singh, who was the daughter of a Maharaja, who lived on the grounds of Hampton Court Palace, to individuals like uh, Lillian Ball, who was a working class dressmaker from Tooting, who got involved in the window smashing campaigns um, in 1912. So a real range of people were involved, but it was sometimes more difficult for working class women to be involved. They were potentially risking a lot more. Their job security, things like childcare were big factors. If they got involved in militant activities and then maybe ended up in prison. There was also a case of um, a suffragette who went by the name of Jane Wharton, um, who was actually an upper class suffrage supporter, Constance Lytton, and she disguised herself as a working class suffragette when she went to prison and got treated very differently. So there were uh, barriers sometimes to being involved in the movement. So the suffrage movement can tend to be associated more with middle class women. So our next question is who opposed the suffragettes? So actually, lots of people uh, opposed the suffragettes. Big sections of government didn't want women to get the vote at the time. They were worried that if women got the vote on equal terms with men, there would be a female-dominated electorate, and how would that change things? How would women vote? Would they vote in the interests of the country? There were lots of concerns. But also suffragettes were controversial because of their militant methods. So a lot of people opposed their methods as well, wanting them to campaign in more peaceful ways. And there were even societies set up to oppose votes for women. And um, within our collections, we have letters from women who were part of some of these societies arguing why they shouldn't get the vote. So how did the suffragettes protest? So initially, uh, the first protest was Christabel Pankhurst and Annie Kenny standing up in a Liberal Party meeting, kind of shouting out and asking, will the Liberal government give votes for women? And that was how the kind of original origins of militant activism kind of started. 
But from there, it kind of escalated. Uh, they still faced the backlash from the government who were un unwilling to give women the vote. So they campaigned in different ways over the next decade from arson campaigns to window smashing campaigns, all sorts of kind of disturbances. But their work was also underpinned by more traditional methods of campaigning. So they still did things like sending petitions, holding big public mass meetings, uh, selling the suffragette newspaper. So lots of ways that they ultimately protested. So the next question is, were the suffragettes terrorists? So this continues to be a really hot topic of debate. Uh, essentially, because of the frustration, because of the lack of change in government, the suffragettes used increasingly militant but also violent methods that we now could definitely interpret as terrorism. But opinion is quite divided on it. So they did do things like they targeted Lloyd George's house at Walton on the Hill. They left an explosive device at St Paul's Cathedral. So there were lots of things that could now be interpreted as terrorism, but opinion is quite divided. Why did the suffragettes go on hunger strike? So the government treated suffragettes as second division prisoners. Essentially, they had less privileges, less rights. Um, but suffragettes believed that they were political prisoners, that they should be treated as such. So to protest this, an individual in 1909, Marion Wallace Dunlop, uh, started to go on hunger strike. So she refused food and water. So this individual act of protest then got adopted by the movement more widely. Um, and many women then started to go on hunger strike to protest their treatment. The government then reacted and started to force feed suffragette prisoners. Um, and there was also the use of the Cat and Mouse Act eventually, which allowed suffragette prisoners to be released and then rearrested. So this was really another way of protesting for their rights, but also uh, causing government significant disruption. Were the suffragettes successful? So again, this is really up for debate in some ways. So in 1918, the Representation of the People Act was passed and that enfranchised 8.4 million women as well as many working class men. Um, but it came with a property qualification um, and an age restriction as well. So it wasn't the franchise on equal terms. Opinion is really divided on the impact, particularly of the militant part of the suffrage movement. So some people would see the First World War as having a bigger impact on why women gained the vote, uh, kind of proving their role in society, taking on so much war work. Whereas some people would see the, um, the militant campaigns and campaigns generally of suffragettes as being hugely important. For me, um, votes for women wouldn't have even been on the government's radar if it wasn't for the pre-First World War suffrage campaigns over many decades by many tens of thousands of women um, and indeed men as well, trying to get the vote for women. Are the suffragettes still active? So essentially, no. Um, many but not all suffrage campaigners stopped campaigning on the outbreak of the First World War. And by 1928, they'd won their demand of equal franchise. So women were enfranchised uh, on the same basis as men. But actually, women wanted the vote for all sorts of reasons to affect many things in society, like equal pay, uh, childcare issues, um, many other things that continued to be topical for, for many decades. So many women who had been involved in the suffrage campaigns continued to campaign in other ways. And certainly there continues to be a, a feminist tradition and women campaigners that fight um, for equal rights up to the present day. And those were the internet's most searched questions on the suffragettes.